Welcome to our lecture online. One of the most dramatic results of the general theory of relativity is what we call gravitational lensing. Well, we realize now that space is curved or bent because of the presence of a large object, such as a star or planet, a moon, or a galaxy. And it's bent in such a way that that space around those large objects begin to act like a converging lens. So let's take a look at what a converging lens can do for us. Let's say we have an object on one end, we have a converging lens. The light from the object goes to the converging lens, the light converges and forms an image on the other side of the lens. Now typically the image for a converging lens will be upside down if the object, object is beyond the focal point of the lens. Notice that the magnification of the image is equal to minus s prime over s, where s prime is the image distance and s is the object distance. Well, it turns out in space, because of curvature space due to the general theory of relativity, we have the same effect. And the most dramatic example of that is a particular galaxy right here, which is known as Q2237 plus 30. It is 8 billion light years away, so at that distance, that galaxy would be barely visible. But the light that's been traveling through space for 8 billion years passes by exactly another galaxy which is about 400 million light years from us. That galaxy is known as ZW2237 plus 030. These numbers obviously look like they're exactly the same because they're lined up perfectly and those numbers indicate the direction in which you want to look to see those particular objects. This is known as Huckra's lens and it turns out that the light that passes by that galaxy then comes back together and forms an image where the earth is and it acts just like a converging lens. Not only does it form an image where the light that's over here coming from this galaxy normally would not be seen because this galaxy would completely block it, but the light goes around it and bends because of the curvature of space around that galaxy and comes together and forms an image. So one, we can see the galaxy that otherwise would not be visible to us because it's hidden behind this other galaxy. And two, and again, this one is 20 times closer than this, so this would be extremely difficult to see because this would be much larger from our vantage point. And two, because of the gravitational lensing, the image is much larger than with the original image. Would, uh, let me say that again. The image that we see from the light bending around this galaxy is much larger than the actual object we would see if there wasn't a galaxy in its place. Not only that, it turns out that as the light bends around the galaxy, we end up seeing four separate images of the same galaxy. And those images are much larger than the original image we would see if we're looking directly at the galaxy. And so this is known as Einstein's cross because you can obviously tell that if you go like this, you form four images that look like a cross around the image that bends the light. So this light came from 8 billion light years ago uh, away, and of course 8 billion years ago. It bends around this galaxy that's much closer to us, comes back together, but the images don't converge into a single image, so we see the four separate images like this, which are what we're looking at is this galaxy back here. So this is known as Einstein's cross. If you ever wonder what we meant by Einstein's cross, that's what it is. And it's due to the gravitational lensing, which is due to the bending of space around any large object. And in this case, it's an entire galaxy that bends the light coming around it before it gets to the Earth. It's amazing. And actually, we use this principle more than one location. There's other places too where we're able to look at a galaxy much clearer because the magnification and the lensing that occurs when the light bends around a much closer galaxy. And that is how it's done and prove again that the theory of general relativity is real and can be shown to be real in all kinds of ways, including gravitational lensing. And that is how we know it. So does that little galaxy need to be way bigger? So this galaxy right here is actually not a big galaxy per se. Compared to the other one. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't matter. It could be any galaxy. The light will simply bend around it. Even relatively smaller galaxies still contain billions of stars. That's a lot of mass, a lot of, a lot of 
bending of space around it. And so every galaxy has the ability to act like a lens. So does the Earth have to be there for it to be in focus? Or can it be, say, closer to the bending galaxy? So it turns out that if you see a singular image, that's when the light that goes around in all directions has been able to get come together and form a single image again. In this case, it doesn't form a single image, it forms pieces of an image. And that's also because there's other interaction, there's other galaxies in places that are closing the line of sight that also bends the light to some extent in such a way that it's not a perfect one galaxy, nothing else in the way, and it looks exactly like that. So there are some aberrations that you have to deal with it as well. So there's different reasons why it doesn't look like a perfect singular image. I've seen pictures of places where there's like 10 or 12 or 14 different pieces of images of a single galaxy. Especially when the light goes through a cluster of galaxies that are all pretty close to direct line of sight between the galaxy we're looking at and us. So does that have to do So you don't have the exact same analogy. So here in a lens, you have exact focal lengths. We don't exactly have that here, but there's an analogy there as well. To some extent, there are simil not similar, but kind of like places where you could consider that would be the focal length of the, um, of the galaxy. But it's not quite like that. It's not that perfect. Oh, um, for the, you have the galaxy the image. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how it appears, yes. Of, of course, it could have been this way. You know, that, that's actually a good question. You always see the picture like this, but maybe they rotated the picture. <laughs> I don't know. I always was on, now that you asked the question, you asked really good questions. I always thought that that's exactly how the picture appeared, but they could have turned it. So I need to go find out. I don't know for sure. I've always known it to look exactly like that, so that's why it looks like a cross, and I would not be surprised that it looks like that in real, when you look at it in the telescope. Yeah, but it looks like that, and then if you go to a, 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 a point where it co coalesces to one image, mm -hmm. does that mean that it turns back to the way it was? Does that mean the top one is rotated 180 degrees, and those are, the two side ones are also 180 degrees of each other? Oh, yeah, that, that's actually a good question. You might get a, a jungled up picture, so to speak because of the orientation, yeah. I don't know about that. Uh, what would happen though, if they all came back together, you would see the light of this galaxy and the light of that galaxy together, right? It's not like one would block the other. You, they would kind of intermix as a single image. It would be kind of a mess. So it might be much better to look at it if it's like this. So then the two are not together. Does hmm? it turn 90 degrees or is it just like? That, I'm not sure of. That is another really good question. So what, what does that image actually look like, right? If you look at the four different images, are they turned? Are they skewed? Yeah, it's, I, in my opinion, I would say that they look fairly similar. So that the picture you get from each one of them is fairly similar to the overall picture that you would get from the galaxy without the lensing on each one of them. Yeah, it's not like it's a piece of the galaxy. It's the whole galaxy that's bent around this way, the, that's bent around the other way, that's bent up and it's bent down. So it's four separate images of the same galaxy, essentially. You don't know if it's rotated or not. Um, so because of the lensing, you would think that this would be upside down. This would be upside down. This would be upside down this way, and this would be upside down this way. So if it has the same effect as the lensing there, everything would be upside down. 